Hello Earthlings and all non-Earth based entities. I'm Isha Mandloy, a parasite from the planet Zoxonia and your host for today. My body might be in the 21st century witnessing the downfall of the human race in real time, but my brain and soul are in 200 BCE. Let me explain. I'm looking for another undoing of the human race. Something just as dramatic but less funny. The origin of patriarchy, the beginning of sexism. Wait, 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 is that the Manasmriti being written? It mentions that women are inferior to men and should not be left alone, unsupervised because they cannot be trusted. Clearly not our era. What I have to do is travel further back in time, perhaps to around 340 BC. The only way to time travel successfully is through these intergalactic sexy dance moves that I have created. One, two, three, four. Is that Aristotle I see? One of my major role models. Let's see what he has to say about women. Oh, he says that women are deformed men and all the problems in society are because of imperfect men. Basically, women. I did not expect this from Aristotle, although I love your theory about teleology and what you said about Plato's theory of forms. It was a bold move. I appreciate it. But you know what? Whatever. I don't need you in my life. I need to go further back in this quest to find the origin of sexism. Perhaps 400 BCE. Never mind, I can already see how this is going to play itself out. Yudhishthira and Duryodhan are involved in a game of chess. And Yudhishthira is just one step away from putting his wife on stake over a game of chess. We're already too far gone, folks. Misogyny is here. We're in 2350 BCE. One of the most ancient human civilizations is flourishing. The Mesopotamian society. The wheel is alive, there's fire, there's agriculture. This is wonderful. But a man can leave his wife, but a woman cannot file for divorce. Additionally, she can also be sold off as property. Great work, lads. You won't believe what I found. I figured out the root of sexism and it precedes the invention of the wheel. I'm in 8000 BCE and sexism is just being created in real time in front of my eyes. And the cause of it? Agriculture. I know, right? Women invented agriculture. They were the gatherers who figured out that when you drop seeds onto the ground, they somehow grow into crops. Women invented agriculture. And then men stole it from them. Can you imagine a man stealing your idea? giving you no credit for it, completely removing you from your own idea and then oppressing you using the same. So unbelievable, right? So this is how it all happened. As agriculture became a full-scale operation, you need a lot of physical strength to carry it out. There were large expanses of land and a lot of men were required to plow it. In fact, plowing requires greater strength than hoeing and all cultures that actually used hoes to do agriculture are more egalitarian than the ones that used plows. At the same time, we started settling down due to agriculture and there was a need for someone to manage the household as such and women were definitely more equipped for the job. At the same time, there was a population explosion because people just had more time on their hands. Women were mostly involved in childbearing and rearing. When men started controlling all the means of sustenance, it was obvious that women were relegated to the position of secondary citizens. Just as the Ambani's can easily influence the politics and the economics of India, men shaped the culture of the society back then. Research from hunter-gatherer societies of today from Africa and Philippines show that all hunter-gatherer societies are comparatively more egalitarian than agriculture-based societies. This is solid evidence. In fact, we have found that equality was actually evolutionarily beneficial to early humans. Because we lived in small groups of usually strangers and not relatives, interbreeding, which was detrimental to our survival, was prevented. Chimpanzees, our closest relatives as a species. Do you know why they are not as evolutionarily advanced as we are? Because they live in male-dominated societies where wars are very frequent. This means that kids often do not become adults in their society and technological advancements are impossible. Wait, did we talk about Marx and Engels? Because we have to talk about them. Just a sec, I'm receiving a transmission from the US. What? They don't want me to talk about this? 
uh, I think we'll have to skip this part, guys. I'm sorry, Kali. Just kidding. <laughs> Marx and Engels obviously had a say in this matter. They thought that monogamy and the institution of family was the beginning of oppression of women. But this began with agriculture. As men started accumulating agricultural surpluses, a thing that we had not heard of in times of hunter-gatherer societies, we started having a selfish attitude. We wanted to pass it on to our own progeny. This was impossible in times of hunter-gatherer societies because we had something called group marriages. A single man would marry multiple women or multiple women would marry multiple men. It was all a big orgy. <laughs> Should I say that? But once we started having surpluses, monogamy emerged. Men wanted to be able to dictate who their resources went to. By this time, they controlled all the resources. And women were just another tool of the process. There is one more reason why agriculture led to the oppression of women. Wars. Now that we had agriculture in place, we were sort of settled down. But the same soil would not yield the same results all the time. So we had to move to other territories, which were also occupied. This led to the spread of agriculture and wars. The physical strength of men was required yet again. And voila, sexism was born. Just one thing before we leave. While researching this, I found that chimps have male-dominated societies. They have a lot of wars, very little sex, no homosexuality, and smaller lifespans. On the other hand, bonobos, similar to chimpanzees and our second closest relatives as humans. They have matriarchal societies, no wars, homosexuality, sex up to 10 times a day, and a greater lifespan and happiness. I'm just saying matriarchy works better for folks. Female bonobos are not stronger than male bonobos, physically speaking. They have lesser weight ratios than men do. It is similar to humans, but the women of the species have really strong bonds with each other. The solidarity between them is inspiring. That is the reason that they are able to maintain a matriarchal society despite being weaker physically and overall maintain peace. That's all folks. I did not have fun researching this video because it involved facing a lot of unpleasant facts about humans. <laughs> I hope you found value in this video. See you in the next one.